It's the holiday edition of Business Morning. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Harriet Agbenyi. A good morning to you and welcome from to our viewers here and around the world. Let's kick off the show with, despite the fact it's been a holiday, we've got some news that we're expecting will be trending for the rest of the week. The Securities and Exchange Commission has placed an indefinite suspension on Heritage Capital Markets Limited over allegations of unauthorized sale of shares belonging to an investor and the company's refusal to comply with the Commission's directives over the matter. Now, Heritage Capital's directors and sponsored individuals have also been suspended indefinitely by the Commission. Now, the Commission warns the general public that the suspension will remain in force pending the resolution of the issue against the market operator. The Commission also affirms it would not hesitate to take appropriate enforcement action against any person found to be in violation of the provisions of the ISA 2007 and the rules and regulations of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Also in the news, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, the NMPC, says it has adopted strategies to ensure operational profitability through the renegotiation of all existing contracts. Now, a statement issued by the corporation explains that contract renegotiations has in gains of between 5 and 30 percent discounts so far. The group managing director of the NNPC, Dr. Mekanti Baru, also confirms that the corporation has completed negotiations with its joint venture partners towards the resolution of cash call funding challenges through payment of arrears. According to the, according to the corporation, efforts are on to put in place structures that would enable smooth implementation of new business models for the NMPC's subsidiaries in the new year. Of course, the new year is just a few days away, but the Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors has again assured customers of continued, continued metering. In Monday's full-page advertorial, the electricity distribution company says in the interim, until all customers can be metered, estimated billing methodology as defined by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission will be used. This method has... Faulted, has been faulted and labeled crazy billing by customers, but the power companies say it is in line with stipulated guidelines from the regulator and that a huge penalty is placed on any disco that fails to conform. Of course, as I said, today is a holiday, it's Boxing Day, so there's a, a kind of lull across the most of the major segments of the market that we're tracked, but that's going to come back on stream on Wednesday, but not in the news. And we're hoping that Olumide Makoli can give us an update on what other stories uh, are topping th this hour. Good morning to you, Olumide. Good morning, Harriet. I'll do my best. Okay. <laughs> Compliments of the season. Thank you. And to all our viewers as well, welcome to Headline News. President Mohamedou Buhari says he has yet to recover from the shock he received when he discovered that the past administrations did not save from the gains made during the oil boom. He was speaking when he received some Christian faithful who paid him the traditional Christmas homage at the presidential villa. The Edo State Governor, Mr. Godwin Obasike, is appealing to all well-meaning individuals and corporate bodies to join the government to improve the welfare of internally displaced persons in the state. He made the appeal during a Christmas party organized by the state government for internally displaced people at the Christian Home for the Needy. Elsewhere, residents of Igomu area in Lagos woke up on Christmas Day to huge plumes of smoke from the head office of the Nigerian Breweries PLC. Although no life was lost in the inferno, which lasted several hours, the fire caused considerable damage to the company's bottling arm. In a similar incident, property worth millions of naira have been destroyed in another fire outbreak at Kara Market in Ogun State. Officials of the National Emergency Management Agency claim the fire may have been caused by a faulty generator. He says the swift response of the emergency unit, security operatives and members of the public helped reduce the spread of the inferno. Finally, on the foreign scene, the Israeli government is still smarting from the UN resolution on the Israeli settlement reached on Friday. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu summoned ambassadors of 10 nations that participated in the vote and the U.S. ambassador. 
The U.S. had abstained from the vote, allowing it to go through in the Security Council. Israel has accused the U.S. its closest ally, but a frequent critic on settlements of engineering the vote, something Washington has denied. Those were the headlines. You can find details of these stories and more on our website, ChannelsTV.com. Business Morning continues with Harriet. Well, thank you so much, Olumide. Of course, so it's a mixed bag for most Nigerians celebrating this holiday. We've got fire incidents reported and also across the country, we've got uh, reports of uh, long queues at uh, banks' automated teller machines as most customers try to withdraw money because of the long weekend. And so for some, they've had very serious challenges, but some of the banks have actually, you know, been working on this. And then of course, at this time of the year, is usually synonymous for us to have petrol queues and scarcity as well. But that's not actually what's happening. Instead, most people are complete, complaining of no electricity. And that, of course, will be another source of conversation I'll be having much later on the program with Channel's business news editor, Bosin Omofaye. Now, the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria has been reacting to calls for the review of certain aspects of the Code of Corporate Governance. During a chat with journalists at a just conclusion, Included annual summit of the council, the executive secretary, Mr. Jim Obazi, explained that some of the rules cannot be amended locally. We are discussing at this year's summit. We are discussing the the National Code of Corporate Governance, the newly released code, as effective October 17, uh, 2016, and then the Rule 9 that we issued on International Standard on Auditing 701 which is on the uh, key, uh, auditor's key audit matters. So we are looking at those two documents because uh, there they, they are things that are affecting the corporate world uh, in Nigeria and indeed globally, as we speak. These two documents are newly released.